In this video, we take a close look at ColorFab's XT filament. After reading ColorFab's advertisement blurb for their XT filament, I was eager to try some for myself. While nothing I've read specifies the exact plastic XT is made from, they do say it is a copolyester. Now my current favourite filament is PTG, which is also in the polyester family of plastics, so I was expecting somewhat similar results from both. I'll answer two main questions in this video. One, what is XT like to print with? And two, how does it compare to PETG? For those curious about my 3D printer I've got here, it's based on the Prusa i3 model, runs a E3D V6 hot end with a Lucas extruder. After unboxing the filament, the first thing I noticed was how rigid and springy the filament was, which should translate into very rigid components. I was happy to see XT is a opaque filament, which looks better in my opinion at least when compared to semi-transparent prints though XT does come in clear if you do so desire. XT printing temperature is listed between 240 to 260 Celsius and ColorFab recommends printing onto glue stick or the heated bed to 70 degrees Celsius. However, I had no problems at all getting it to stick to my favorite product, hairspray, on a heated aluminum bed to 65 degrees Celsius. After many test prints, along with dialing in the print settings just right, my final print settings were almost identical to PETG. Nozzle at 260C, heated bed at 65C, with print speeds of 40mm a second, more on that later, 1mm of retraction and 2mm of Z-hop, with cooling fan enabled only when bridging. XT wouldn't extrude cleanly until 260 degrees Celsius for my setup. Any lower in the plastic would look tarnished and small gaps would appear in the shell layers, meaning that the filament isn't getting heated enough to extrude properly. One thing I observed with XT is it seems to stay in a semi-molten state for a long time after it has been extruded. While I haven't done any temperature tests to see what temperature XT hardens again, it seems to be a lot cooler than the extruded temperature. This can be a problem when printing small components because the print times between each layers can be so close that the previous layer hasn't had time to harden before the next. I found a print speed of 20 millimeters a second or slower was required for parts smaller than 50 millimeters square. XT also has a very low viscosity when melted. This means printing overhangs and on top of scaffolding are a tricky subject for XT. This area of the print was printed on top of scaffolding. You can see how messy the first few layers are on top of the scaffolding. Obviously printing on top of scaffolding is never going to look fantastic, but even so this is pretty messy. I found the cooling fan made no noticeable difference when printing on top of scaffolding as well. Some parts come out looking absolutely stunning and as flawless as far as 3D prints go. Just look at the clean edges and lines with this test print of an upcoming project for a new extruder of mine. Next up is the angle test. The first tower is vertical with each tower thereafter increased by 10 degrees all the way to a maximum of 50 degrees on the last tower. You can see in this angle test PETG prints cleanly all the way to the 50 degree tower while XT starts to look messy after the 30 degree tower. It's worth mentioning that for this test, PETG was printed at 40 millimeters a second, while XT had to be printed at half that at 20 millimeters a second. Lastly, we have the bridge test. In this test, the filament must bridge gaps with no support at all. The gaps are 5, 10, 20, 30, and 40 millimeters. With the cooling fan enabled, XT easily bridges even the 40 millimeter gap with no noticeable droop. If you want to print either of the last test prints, links will be found down in the video's description. XT seems to print very clean given the right circumstances, taking into account steep angles and lower than normal print speeds on small parts. For me, XT was so close to being my new favourite filament, but for the aforementioned reasons, PTG is staying on top 
of the leaderboard, at least for me. Colorfab is continuing to innovate new filaments into the market, which is awesome to see. We need companies like them pushing the envelope and developing new products for us to try, and no doubt this sort of filament is only going to get even better in the future. So to summarise, is Colorfab's XT filament here a bad filament and you shouldn't buy it? Absolutely not. However, for my setup and the type of printing I do, I feel PETG is a better all-rounder filament for me. If I did require a filament which was completely opaque, which, as I said, I do prefer, uh, XT would be my first choice without a doubt. So, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It would be much appreciated. And while you're down there, if you'd hit that subscribe button, I'm sure it'd be worth your while. There'll be lots of more reviews, electronic builds, 3D printing, and a whole host of other stuff I'm sure you'd enjoy. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Thank you.